Hello, everybody. Welcome to another exciting episode, Jimmy's Jam Box. We're here, we're back at it again, and we're going to get on into it. But before we do, as always, please make sure to like, subscribe, push all the buttons, do all the things. You know, I don't know where they are, but you do, and I trust you. With that being said, here's a quick word about our sponsor. Butterfly Blue, a deeply calming hemp jasmine tea. A gentle white tea combined with tropical fruits and butterfly blue pea flower to create an elixir that is as delicious as it is beautiful. The Brothers Apothecary. Fine teas and remedies. All right, thanks for watching. As always, shout out the Brothers Apothecary. Make sure to click the link below. Go check out all the cool stuff they have, especially getting ready for the holidays. But now let's go ahead and get on into it. Here is today's guest. What's up, everybody? My name's Nevik. Hello. Thank you so much for joining us. Why don't you tell us a little bit about where you're from, what you do. Give us that like Tinder profile of your involvement with music. Okay. Okay. Uh, I make hip hop music. Okay. Uh, I was born in the Vancouver area, but moved out to Portland to kind of just put that base there. Oh yeah. oh yeah. I mean, that, that seems to be the move right now. Although Vancouver music's coming back. So if you ever wanted to come back, we're blowing up out here. Hey, hey. But what got you into music initially? Like where was the start for you? Well, let's see. The start was probably um, when I was younger, uh, a, a lot of things happened in life mm -hmm. and uh, that builds up sort of emotion. And uh, my brother ended up passing. Mm -hmm. And so uh, I needed an outlet and I got into poetry and okay. um, just decided to do a little freestyle rapping with some friends one time. And they said, you know, you're good. You should write your stuff. Hmm. should actually put it down into words because you clearly have a story to tell there. And I started doing that and just through the years built my craft and just kind of tried to hone and define myself. Gotcha. Okay. Now, when you were first getting into it as like a musical approach, because I mean, poetry is, it's weird how similar but different mm -hmm. the approaches really are. And then there's that like gray area of like spoken word and things like that. But that's, yes. that's, that's something else in its entirety. But when you were first getting into it as a musical approach, who were some of your early influences? Uh, definitely Tech Nine. Oh, okay. uh, of course. Love the man. Yep. He's, uh, he's got them bars. Yep. Um, the Angelic album. Mm -hmm. I still stand behind that being like <laughs> arguably one of the best. It um, really is. It yeah. really is. Um, just uh, Tech. Uh, later years, it's been uh, King Iso. I remember. Oh, hell yeah. Tyler, the creator was a, was mm -hmm. a man for the while. Cause he was so young when he just popped. And yeah. It was, it was a real big, uh, wow. If he can do it, then I, I can too, you know? Yeah. And early Tyler was so out there. It was, I mean, don't get me wrong. Like I am a huge Tyler, the creator fan, definitely in my top five, but like, I really appreciate his narrative so yes. much. Like I appreciated his narrative early on. And then to see him grow into the one it is now, like I understand why people don't like Tyler now or the sound that he's putting out now. I do. It's it's a, it's all about growth. Yeah, it's such a cool and, yeah, evolution and, story. And he's so vulnerable about it. He presents it immediately. He's he's yes. like, not only am I going to tell you my story, I'm going to tell you the story of my story. Yes. And just yes. And, and did you get to, did you get to? He streamed his live. Uh, he streamed his headlining performance of Lollapalooza like a year or two ago on hulu if you haven't watched it is it when he forgot the forgot the lyrics no uh, no no this I was like why uh, i mean maybe might, i don't know i don't think so okay, but, okay, I, but okay. like go watch that performance like hands will. down one of the best live performances i've seen recently because he just he gives it everything i'm talking there are there are outfit changes there are set changes he goes through multiple albums it, like at one point he's like way up in the air at one point he's like getting blown off the stage by a giant but like it's just there's so many elements like you get to see him perform you get to see him get tired but you get to see him love the experience like you could tell he's like been working up to that moment telling telling a story yeah yeah and just it's it's just a really cool experience so anytime that somebody is, brings him up i have to tangent for just a second he's 
he's dope. He really is. He yeah. really is dope. He yeah. really is. He's he, and he's his evolution is just so hell yeah. But we're here. It. We're here to talk yes, about yes, you. Yes, yes, yes. And we've still got a couple more foundation questions. Mm -hmm. This next one though, it's one we ask early. It's one we ask often, and it's definitely a crowd favorite. What was the first album you ever bought with your own money? <laughs> uh, first album I ever bought with my own money. Um, uh, probably All S Sixes and Sevens by Tech Nine. Okay. Okay. So, yeah, you were just in it from the beginning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hell yeah. And then what was one of the first shows you ever went to that was like one you wanted to go to, not one you just got like brought to? Um, believe it or not, it was an ICP show. Okay. I ended up not getting into that show. Ah. Uh, different reasons, but one I actually, first show I did get into was Tyler mm -hmm. the Creator. Oh, perfect. Exactly. Uh, who was he performing with? <sighs> I think it was Earl Sweatshirt, Haji Beats. Uh, it was one of their first golf wing tours. Okay. Okay. Yeah. That was, I was, I always love to find out like the when in the it was, eras. It was so, it was, it was good. It oh, was yeah. good. And he was sick too. And he still did, he still did a good oh, yeah. job. There, there's just, we're not going to get back into yeah, it, yeah, but yeah, 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 we, we already went, go re-listen to everything we just said. Yeah, yeah. All right. And then to round it out, when was the moment that you decided music was more than just like a thing to do? Like, when was it, like, when did you first start to take it seriously? Um, when I first started to take it seriously was probably when, um, a lot of people in high school were just like, hey, your music, like, when I listen to it, I see that you, you have a bright future from the, the stuff you've came from mm -hmm. and it makes me feel emotions. So you just keep going with it. It's, uh may not be the best now but it's 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 a diamond in the rough you're gonna polish that stone mm -hmm. and be be shining bright one day and so it's like it's just stuff like that though over the years that has built and built and just i have to keep going and now i just can't can't give up oh yeah oh yeah all right well now let's go ahead and let's talk about you as the artist okay, okay. and we're, we're gonna get the easy one out of the way how did you pick your name uh uh nevex so everyone just kept telling me that you need to have your rap name just be your name, just be Kevin, and it just sounds that's that's the worst rap name. I'm sorry, right? like, like I, Kevin I, is Kevin a Gates. Kevin as a name is totally fine. Exactly. Kevin as a rap name, not okay. <laughs> this is Kevin Gates, which I, yeah, he pulls it. He has the weight, but but he's not just Kevin. He's exactly. Kevin Gates, exactly. like you know, like that, like exactly. and and it's the Gates that hits. You know what I mean? Like exactly. that's the part of the name where you're like, damn. And everyone just just kind of kept telling me that, so I was like. Okay, well, how do you spell it backwards? Let's see. N-I-V-E-K, Nevek, Nevek. I like it. Boom. Rolls off the tongue. It's easy. That's what everyone keeps telling me, so why not? One of your next albums you should put out should be called Nevekian instead of Nemekian. That You know what's super funny? Super funny. A good friend of mine, shout out to James. Uh, he has. Uh, he actually always calls me the Nevekian. Oh, okay. Nevekian's 1312. Yo, it, yo, that's, that's James's and Jimmy's. We got we got that lock. We got that lock. <laughs> he, uh, yeah, no, that's actually a really, really good idea. There you go. Not that's, bad. That's how it's going to happen. Mm-hmm. That's for sure. I have other concepts that'll run off of that, but we'll do that off camera. That one's <laughs> yeah. going to be fun. But let's go ahead and let's talk about your writing process. And we're going to break it up into parts, but we're going to start right at the beginning. Okay. So when you get inspired, so you are, you are ready to make music. We'll get past that step. You feel the desire to create. What are some of the first things you do when you sit down to make music? Um, sometimes I already have certain lyrics mm -hmm. uh written from a uh cadence that i went off of or an emotion or a um like a thought mm -hmm. or an event that happened so i can try to make a song around that and other times i will feel an emotion and uh, my producer will make a beat for me to kind of go around that so i'll write to it and just kind of feel f feel to it for minutes I'll, I'll vibe to it for at least 20 30 minutes before i actually start writing just playing it over and over to kind of mm -hmm get where i want to go yeah. to this yeah paint the picture in your exactly, head a little exactly exactly oh yeah okay and then once you've gotten a song finished on like so once you've written 
the song. It's all like you are now ready to practice it and rehearse it to perform it. Mm -hmm. How long does it take you from that point where the song is quote unquote finished being written to where it's ready to perform? Uh, it depends on how much I'm feeling the song really. Uh, okay. sometimes like some songs, if it's like a, a really intense song, like one that's really deep to me, mm -hmm. I won't be as gung ho to get to it because it's like this one's it's, it's a painful song. Yeah. So I won't be too, too jump to it, but songs that I'm like, okay, this is a feel song that I know can make other people feel good too. I'm more wanting to get to it and rehearse it mm -hmm. more so I can just get in there, get it out and just get the song done. Okay. Now, when it comes to situations like that, do you find that you put the songs you perform less out sooner? Like, will you release them sooner since they're not as performed as often? Or do you like wait for those for like albums and things like that? Um, I guess I just kind of play it when the time is right. Really? I just okay. release it when the time, when I feel like the, it's like, okay, I need to, I need to release something. I just, just release it. If, uh, I like to do snippets and have people like listen to it and give me feedback just so I know if I'm going the right direction, if they like that sound and, yeah. But also it's, it's my music. So I like to yeah. make what I like. Well, more, I mean like for the songs where like performance wise, you may not perform them as often because I see, I see, I see. they like, they hit that spot. And that's, a, that's a hard thing to pull live. If you don't have a long set, will you release those sooner to get them out into the world sooner? Or do you usually wait for those ones to drop with a body of work? I will probably wait to drop those with the body of work because, okay. uh, weirdly enough, the, deeper songs that I do perform have when I'm, when I'm on stage, it just gives me more oomph, gotcha. I guess. Cause it's just that emotion. Yeah. It's, it makes me, it's, it's raw. It's there. Okay. Oh yeah. And then how long would you say it usually takes you get, you know, ballpark to get a song to the point where it's ready re to release into onto like platforms and for the world and such. Um, it, Depends on, I guess, the scale of the song. If it's just like a, a like a, a three to five minute song or something like that, just like a, a single, like just me, probably like a week or two. It depends okay. on how how scaled it really is. Like if mm -hmm. I'm if it's just me spitting or if it's like a deep to me song, but gotcha. if it has like features and stuff. I want to make sure they like it also. And okay, I like their stuff, and we're just I like to be transparent, so we're working together on it. And, gotcha. Uh, so I guess not too long, yeah, but not too too short because I, I like you. the perfection takes time. True, true, but there is also over perfection. Exactly, yeah. exactly. So that's why that goes back into the when I feel like the time is right, it's just kind of just got to go for it. Yeah, no, totally. And I think the more important thing is to be putting out music. I think at the end of the day, we like when you hold on to stuff for too long, the story isn't accurate anymore. You know exactly. what I mean? Like if you're so far past when that song story was written, you can't live it loudly. Exactly. And that's not to say that you have to put out something at the time of you can wait forever to put out a song. Mm -hmm. But that's that is the trade off is that while you may release something that you spent so much time on and put everything into to make sure that that was correct. If you wait like two, three years, you're not even the same person. You don't have that mindset. Anymore. No. And that. it, and, and it just, you can't connect to the people the way they listen to it the same way, mm -hmm. or at least like, I don't feel like I could, I, I only ever speak of these objectively. I, no, that yeah. makes total sense. And yeah. then sometimes you, you don't want to dive back into that mindset. Yeah. You, you brought yourself out of that for a reason. Mm -hmm. That totally makes sense. And I think once you have enough work, uh, at least as far as like, I would do it back like when I was with my old bands, we would try to release stuff when we were like ready to be done playing it live as much. Okay, okay. So like when, when we're ready to bring in new things, we would release the stuff we've been playing heavy so people can enjoy it. If they request it, obviously we're ready to go, Yep. but like we want to show you new stuff. So we're going to give you the stuff you've been singing along to so that you can sing along to it in your own time, learn some new songs when you come to our shows. I like that. I yeah. like that. Yeah. And I, it, it's such a gray area on the like introduction of new music and like where you play versus like how often you play in the same, like that. That there's such a meticulous art to that in general. That could be a yes. whole other episode. Yes. But yes. Well, let's keep moving along with you. And this next one, this is what I've been asking a little more recently. And I, it's a fun question, but it's kind of a strange one. Okay. Okay. 
I want you to think about your current sound. So either songs you're working on, songs you like just put out, songs you're getting ready, like the the most recent stuff you worked on. Mm -hmm. What is it about your current sound that you enjoy at the moment? The current sound, uh, it's raw. It's, um, it's, it's from here. It's, uh, sort of, a uh, uh, well, can you describe raw a little bit more? Like what are the elements that, that pertain to it being described that way? It's, uh, me sort of unfiltered a little bit, just, uh, me just kind of letting loose, before I try to uh, make something a little more classy, I guess you could say. Okay. And so by letting loose, are you like being more like dynamic with your vocals? Are the beats a little more aggressive? Are the topics more very like, are like less covered? Like, like I'm so curious to know, like what, like what would the tactile experience be? A little more aggressive, a little more um, uh, raw and gritty mind state behind just the 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 basis of it, okay. and just kind of uh, it's the evolution of like all of us, you know, that you start from the bottom. So I just kind of imagine like a this uh, this bottom place where it is, mm -hmm. and like the next album, of course, it has to be you know higher tier. So mm -hmm. it'll it'll be a um, I guess not lighter, mm -hmm. but more uh, refined, okay. not as angry, I guess. Cause you know, that's how you heal. Yeah. Not, not to dislike Mr. Creator. Thanks. There we go. Okay. Exactly. I get it now. I get it now. Hell yeah. And then what would you say is some of your like core inspiration for your music? Like where, where would you say like majority of it is rooted? Um, Mental health, uh, helping uh, myself and other people feel, um, I guess, normal and comfortable with these things because everyone has their own problems and some of these things that you may think in your head make you feel crazy. And when you hear a song that you're like, that's, that's how I feel, it just kind of makes you click mm -hmm. and makes you feel a certain way. And there's been a few people who have said that that's how they feel and it's like, that's, that's the feeling. Oh, yeah. Just got to keep going with that oh, and yeah. just, yeah, just to help, just to help people. I love that. Also, I mean, it's important to have a direction. Like exactly. I think that a lot of people are like, oh, well, I don't want to write this kind of music. And you're like, well, what, what kind of music do you want? Like we spend so much time saying what we aren't doing. Exactly. Yeah. So that it's, it's, it's cool that you have a purpose, like a direction in general, because it could be anything. You don't have to have a specific direction. But to have a direction. Mental health for uh, a long time has been uh, something I've battled with, something uh, a lot of friends and family have battled with. And uh, I mean, it's it's a problem. Something you know what I mean? Yeah, like the, like the the world, especially the world as of now, mm -hmm. like with everything that's happened in the past and just cumulatively what it's gotten up to. Like, I think that, you know, th there's a whole another episode rooted in the conversation <laughs> of mental health. But I think music addresses a lot of it. And it's cool because music is one of the rare opportunities where you can address it individually as a person. Your music can heal you and then you can share it with the world and give everybody an opportunity to sh share in that healing. Exactly. And that's the, you know, like there are only so many things that do like written text mm -hmm. is another opportunity mm -hmm. for that, like books and things like that, literature is another one that exists. But there, other than that, like visible art in its own way. Exactly. So, and it makes you, and it makes you just see how many people really go through the same things you do, but you think, ah, oh, no, this does, this is only happening to me. And you're, mm -hmm. then you find out no, this guy made a song about the same thing that happened to me. Yeah. Yeah. And it's like it, the relatable aspect is almost therapeutic in its own way. Exactly. So it's cool that you get to give yourself that opportunity to heal and then turn around and take your healing moment and let other people use it if they would like to. Exactly. That's actually, if, if I ever, uh, hopefully I'll go to college one day, but if I do, that's what I want to go for is uh, therapy and then musical. Uh, uh, Appreciation? Understanding? Mm, uh, therapy as well? What's it called? Theory. Yeah, music theory. Music oh, theory. Yeah. There we go. Thank you. <laughs> Sorry. That, Thank you. My ventriloquism uh, acted uh, up. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, music theory and uh, yeah, therapy so I can become a music therapist because I feel like just music is a healing thing. It, it really is. Very much so. Very much so. And actually that kind of segues 
into this next question. This is the 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 we're going to wrap up the artist focus portion with this, but this okay. is definitely the densest question in the interview because we've now talked a lot about like what music gives, like what what happens outward, what we receive from the actions, the doing of it, and such. Mm-hmm. But what is it about music when it's just you and like you you're just you're sitting there, you're making the music. What does it give back to you in those moments? A lot of sense of uh, clarity mm-hmm. as sometimes I won't, when I write certain things, I won't feel, realize I'm feeling this way till I write it. And it's like, that, that makes sense. Or there's certain things I don't understand these feelings. And then I write them out and it makes me understand it more and kind of come to terms with it and not, not worry about it. Because yeah. at the end of the day, there's 99 million different things we could worry about. Oh, it's true. It's and, true. Uh, yeah, just tr- got to try to be happy. So it, it really, it, it's really, really like therapy. It really is for me. That's uh, that's what it, it just, just like a therapy session. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. All right. Well, thank you for sharing that. Of course. Of course. Now let's go ahead and let's get into some hypothetical questions. And these ones literally, sky's the limits because all the answers are made up. All right. And we're going right. to, we're going to start with the right at the beginning. If you could work with any one person and the only thing that's required is they have to be alive, but it doesn't have to be a musician. It doesn't have to be a pretty, it doesn't have to specifically be anything, Mm -hmm. anybody. But if you could work with any one person, who would you work with and how would you want to work with them? Uh, I really want to say Tech Nine, just because Tech Nine has been one of my longest uh, musical like pe- persons who I've just vouched for, and he's been, he's been my man. But mm-hmm. I'm gonna have to say King Iso, just because he's coming up in recent years, and I've been following him for a while, and he ended up signing with Tech, and then he is all about mental health, and that's just an, a big aspiration for me. Like I, if Hell yeah, it's it's bit it makes me feel like. I can do the things that I can do. Yeah. Also, I don't know if you know this, but Tech Nine as a feature is actually very accessible right now. Oh yeah. yeah. Like, like he is really just like, hey everybody. Like I he has to not be charging a ton. You know what I mean? Like I don't know what I imagine it's still not I, I imagine it's probably a few hundred bucks. But like I've seen him show up on a it's lot 50K. of is it? Yeah. It's gotta be cheaper than that because I've been seeing him show I've been seeing him show up on some tracks that are not as good as they could be so i think i think recently Actually, he, he, he released a video about this recently i was oh okay gonna, this must have just changed then because like literally over the last like six months i've seen him show up on so many things and i guarantee you the songs he showed up on people weren't paying 50k well who, who knows he could also be a uh, fam is also a big thing like if uh i definitely wouldn't be charging my fam 50 true if it was if it's someone who i know and i fucks with like that it's like no nah, no nah, you get the, you get on the slide you fair, fair i'll give you that well let's hope so especially if somebody has the chops you know what i'm saying that's what i'm saying is not all of these tracks the other people had them that was the confusing part for me i was all like okay. it was it was surprising to see him on the track so that's why i was thinking like maybe he was running a campaign for a little bit where he was like hey i just want to like be doing a thing i could see that yeah. i could see that but You would know better than me for sure. And then subsequently, who's a local artist that you're aware of that you haven't gotten to connect with yet, but you would like to. Hmm. Um, Probably Lord Lawrence. Oh yeah. Yo, shout out Lord Lawrence. Big friend of the show. Big friend of the show. He's really lit. And uh, he's got, he's got a vibe. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Well, I mean, y'all know what to do. Add him in the comments. Let's make that happen. And then if you could perform anywhere in the world and you wouldn't have to worry about crowd access, power, building stability, guaranteed best show, guaranteed best lineup, and it doesn't have to be a venue. Mm -hmm. It could be anywhere. Where would you want to do a show? Probably Red Rocks. Hell yeah. Either that or uh, 
God, what's that new? What's that new crazy p- place they put in Vegas? Oh, the, the Sphere. Dome. Yeah, yeah, the yeah. Sphere. yeah. You know that's that's definitely an answer that's showing up more often yeah. as well. Red Rocks finally has become a recurring answer. It was really it was it's a beautiful place. It's the best, and it was bugging me how long this question has been asked without people saying it. <laughs> like it's it, like like I was just like, why is nobody? And then one day somebody said it, and from then on, a bunch of people have said it unbeknownstly. It's, a good it's place. such a beautiful venue. And then the spear, of course. Yeah, I mean that's Crazy. that's a whole nother. Like I, I wouldn't even consider there because I couldn't consider like like I can't, I can't think of that experience in my oh, head. Kind of visuals would I have there? Just yeah, for myself. Yeah, like <laughs> like what would you? Because you, it has to be big. The resolution has to be insane. Crazy. Like I like I can't even like what would that file format even be? Like they've got it. <laughs> like they've got to be like just give us the video and we'll make it fly. Like. That, that, that's just bamboozling to me. Also, I would get dizzy as shit. I'm sure if there's anything where it all just goes, I'd be like, makes sense on why everyone who I see playing there usually has sunglasses on. Yeah. Well, it's so bright. Mm-hmm. It's a wall of TV screen. Mm-hmm. It's a, it's, it's a literal dome of TV screen. Yeah. It's like an IMAX on steroids. Like somebody was like, you know what? IMAX is incredible. <laughs> What if it was more? Just l- yeah, like just let's more. take that widescreen. Like uh, you remember the you know the curved lens like screens that everybody's doing. What if that was a show? What if you had to just look up and around? Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, so that yeah, so that's that's just such a different experience. Like I like I don't even know when I'll go to it, but I like actively keep trying to see like what's happening there because there's gonna be something. Yeah, there's gonna yeah, be something yeah. where you're like nothing. Like I wouldn't go see you two. And how much is the? How much is the? They have to be tickets. Adult. They have to be so much. Have well, that's be. the thing is maybe they don't because how you know like you know how usually for shows like the 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 nosebleeds are cheaper and the yeah. weird like uh, it's such a like I almost feel like the experience isn't the stage. True. The experience True. is the wall. True. So it, every spot has to kind of be a good spot. Because it's all vertical at a certain point. No matter what, you're you're looking up. Yeah, at a certain point, you're only getting taller, not further away. So you're like just looking down at the same thing as the people below. That's, yeah, huh. Things to think about. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. All right, well, now we're going to have to do an episode of the show there. We'll see you in (laughs) Vegas. Yes. All right, and then to wrap it up, end of the hypothetical questions. If you could get an album from one person or from anybody, and they could be alive, they could be dead, they could have just put an album, they could have never put out an album. But if you could get one album right now from anybody, who would you want an album from? Like an album that's already out? No, it does like, not. It, like if you could get an, it right now, if somebody like could give you, yeah, like, me. well, not, I mean, just if, if somebody was going to release one more album and you could pick it tomorrow, you would wake up and that album uh, would be there. I'm going to have to say King Iso because I've been bumping his latest album like back to back to back okay. and it's like okay i need i need more now no i, I totally <laughs> i totally feel that and uh, you know somebody the other day just hit me with the most out of pocket qu- answer to that and i'm gonna like slowly <laughs> seed it in here so it was like do they have to have ever made music before and i was like oh no there's so <laughs> many new answers to this question now <laughs> like what if jason statham made an album what would that be what like? Genre would it be? I'm sure it would be fast and technical, but it would also be like just a little bit silly. Yeah, 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 yeah. So it would be. It would probably be like progressive. Like it wouldn't be like. It wouldn't be like periphery, but it would like it would almost be like math rock, but angrier. <laughs> There we go. We're getting there. Imagine if Danny DeVito made an album. It'd be like, <laughs> I don't know that he hasn't. I'm going to be completely honest with you. There's a very good chance there's a Danny DeVito album out there. Yes. But if there isn't, let's get one. <laughs> yes. Hell yeah. But I feel like we can make another episode about people who have never made music who should make music. So yes, we'll yes. save that for another time. But we are going to go ahead and start wrapping this up. Rock so go ahead and tell us what do you have coming up in the future? Let's say the beginning of 2024. What can we look forward to? 
I'm hoping to drop a couple singles. Okay. I'm hoping to play some shows. Oh, yeah. Uh, hoping to get a merch line started up. Mm. That's one of the things that I'm really hoping for. So it's, it, a lot of people keep asking me, hey, when, when am I going to be able to get some merch? You know, in Portland, that is like the biggest thing. No. Everybody's like, you got a sticker? Do you have a t-shirt? Do you have a this? Like, everyone's like, I'll buy, they want, I'll they buy want it stuff. all. Yeah. I just, I'll buy it. I don't care how much it is. I'll buy it. And it's like, I'm not looking to take your wallets, but yeah. here, here I'll, I'll get some shirts then. Yeah. Yeah, no, people love stuff. Exactly. No, no. Especially if it's like, okay, I listen to you and I can say, this is the guy I listen to. I got the shirt on. Mm -hmm. People love to do. Hell yeah. That's an awesome thing. No, I feel that. And then um, for the next one, go ahead and look straight at the camera and tell everybody how they can find you. Uh, If you want to be able to find me, you can look me up on Facebook at Nevik. Uh, That's my Facebook page. You can see me on Instagram at I am Nevik 21. You can find me on Twitter at uh, I am Nevek twenty one. Uh, you can look up Nevek is real. That's my um, Gmail. Nevek is real at gmail dot com is my Gmail. You can also look up uh, Nevek is real at Linktree, and you'll find all my links there. Every single every single one of those. Hell yeah, hell yeah. We'll probably put the Linktree on the screen so that everybody can go to there from there. Yeah, but we'll we'll plug a couple of those things for sure. And then uh, any other plugs, any other shout outs, anybody else you'd like to put on while you're on here? Um, my producer, Travi, he always oh, yeah. puts me down. He always helps me up and fucking, er, here, let me reset that. Uh, my producer, Travi, he always helps me up and puts me on with this fucking music. He always helps me with my mi- the mixing and mastering and those dank beats and the recording. It just, I got I to gotta give a shout out to my boy. And then, of course, to every single person who listens to my music. Hell yeah. I got to do that too. Hell yeah. All right. Now we've got one last question to go. But before we do, I'm going to steal the camera for just a second. Roger that. As always, y'all, please make sure to like, subscribe, push all the buttons, do all the things. You know, I don't know where they are, but you do. And I trust you. And one more shout out from our sponsor, the Brothers Apothecary. Make sure to click the link down below. And now for the final question. And this is entirely up to your interpretation. But what is an album that exists already. It's it's already there. Mm-hmm. But what is an album you think everybody should know? I guess uh, not to sound like a, a fangirl or anything. King Iso's Ildren. It's a, it's a it's a really good album. Hell yeah, it really. Hell is. yeah. It's, no, it's, that's a great answer. It's a good album. It, it's really good about mental health. And there's a lot of songs where I'm just like, wow, yeah. this is this yep. it's home. King Iso. If you ever want to be on the show, we can make that happen. Oh yeah. All right. Well, thank you for sharing that. We're going to go ahead and get up and out of here. I appreciate you yeah. coming on. Thank you. Oh yeah. This has been another exciting episode of Jimmy's Jam Box. I'm Jimmy. I'm Nevik. And we're signing off. Later, y'all. That's a wrap. This is not a podcast. This is a show. Keep jamming.